In this quick tip, I'll show you how you can loop samples in time to your sequence tempo on the Insonic ASR10. If you find the clip useful, hit like, subscribe, and if you're on Instagram, drop by for a look at ToneLab. For best viewing, I recommend watching this on a laptop or larger display, such as a TV. Put the clip into full screen mode and set the resolution to 1080p via the settings widget down on the bottom right. I'll spare you the technical details of how I figured this out, but if you're interested, there's an explanation in the SB1200 version of this clip, link in the description area below. Without boring you any further, I've created a BPM to sample calculator that works out exactly what length your samples and loops should be based on your sequence's tempo. It's easy enough to use, you just punch in your sequence tempo, select the key tuning that you play your sample at, C3 generally being the root note or nominal pitch, is what the calculator refers to as zero. Then click calculate and the calculator will provide you with the various results that you can dial into your ASR that will cycle in time to your sequence tempo. You can find the calculator via the ToneLab website, link in the description below. It's free to use, no registration required, so bookmark it in your browser and load the page whenever you need a specific value. You can also use it to figure out durations for your samples to create glitch effects or stutter effects. Just halve the 30 second note value to get 64th note measures and that more or less gets you into glitch territory. But with the versatility of the ASR, you could have a dozen keys or more sharing one sample but utilizing different loop amounts, i.e. positions. I should also mention while the ASR offers two main sample rates, 30K and 44K, the ASR calculator specifically caters to the default rate of 30K. However, if you have samples that use the 44K sampling rate, there's another dedicated calculator for that, among many other types of popular samplers. Plus, sample rates you can use similarly for your DAW's software sampler. And you can find those via the page footer. So without further ado, Let's give it a shot. I've sampled in some audio here. Plus, I've got a basic beat here. But let's choose a new tempo, something a bit faster, and try this out with a tune setting other than the root note of C. I'll punch in 78 BPM and use four semitones lower than C3. Click calculate, and now we have the various values to choose from. Now what you're seeing here is not unlike the measures of time you'd find associated with common quantize options. Similarly, they represent equal divisions of time, but in samples, all based on your BPM. So you can think of this as a means to quantize your loops, so that they cycle perfectly in time to your beat. The only thing you need to consider is which value to choose based on how often you want your loop to cycle, i.e. once per bar, four times per bar, etc, etc. One thing some of you may notice is I haven't exactly adhered to the rigid tempo inside the ASR's sequencer. Instead, I've added a provision for two decimal places for those who might use their ASR with an external sequencer that can cater to the finer resolutions of BPM. If you need your sample to loop exactly to one bar, copy this value here and enter it into your ASR for your sample end value. As a side note, you could double this value or quadruple it if your sample length permits, which you might need for those occasions where you have a two or four bar sample length equivalent. So now if we visit the ASR's loop end value and dial in any fitting measure from the calculator, obviously your loop value can't be greater than the length of your sample. 
So choose something up to the amount of your sample and value. I'll keep it simple for this demo and choose half note. So dial that into your ASR's loop end. And make sure your loop mode is set on. I'll choose loop forward. And that's it, you're good to go. And your sample should now cycle in time to your tempo. As a side tip, you can use your loop position value to shift the entire loop forwards by increasing its value. So experiment with that as you may need to shift your loop position to get certain characteristics in your sample to fit the context of your sequence or vice versa. Anyway, let's hear how that sounds. Okay, good. That loop is now cycling in time with the sequencer. Experiment with the different results and maybe even try some polyrhythmic layers or looping simultaneously in time to your tempo. If you found that useful, let me know by hitting like, subscribe and check out the channel for more quick tips just like this one. If you're on Instagram, come and have a look at Tone Lab. Thanks for watching and bye for now.